Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can use ActionScript to create random motion in your Flash movies. And this is the movie we're going to be creating. Uh, it's just this movie where these balls are moving to a random location uh, in the Flash movie. Once they arrive there, they then pick a new destination and then move to it. And it just continues uh, in a loop like this. So let's go over to Flash and I'll show you how we can create this. Okay, here we are inside of Flash. I've created a new document with a locked actions layer. The first thing I want to do is create a new layer that's going to hold our background. I'm just going to call it back. And then I'm going to grab the rectangle tool with no stroke. And I'm going to create a gradient now as the fill. And what I want is I want this side to be uh, a light blue color like that. And then this side, um, we increase the alpha to 100. I want it to be a darker blue, so something like that. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to drag a rectangle over the stage, and then this will serve as our background. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer. Now what we need to do is to create the little ball movie clip. So we only need to create one movie clip of this ball, and then we're going to use ActionScript to dynamically attach it at runtime. So let's go to Insert, New Symbol, select movie clip and I'm just going to call it ball. Now down here under linkage, and again if you don't see linkage you need to click on this advanced tab and then you want to select export for action script and then give it an identifier. I'm just going to leave it as ball. Click OK. Okay now that we're in here we need to create our little ball so I'm going to grab the circle tool come down here hold the shift key down just drag out a circle about that big Okay. Now I'm going to select it. Now what I want to do is I want to center it here so that the zero zero point is in the center of this ball. The easiest way to do that is to select it and go to the align tab, then click to stage so that any aligning we do aligns it to the stage. And then I want to align it vertically and then horizontally. So now you can see it's the zero zero point is going to be right in the center of the ball. I also want to adjust the gradient in here. I want this first one on the left to be a dark blue, kind of like that. And then this one I want to bring down to white and then lower the alpha to zero. So what's going to happen is it's going to be dark in the center and then it's going to fade out to nothing at the edges. You can see what that looks like there. Okay, so that's all we have to do. We go back to the root timeline. Okay, so we're going to be attaching this movie clip dynamically to the stage at runtime. We're going to create 60 of them and give it random attributes. So let's go to the action script. So we go to the actions layer, click on that first keyframe. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to attach 60 of these ball movie clips onto the stage and give it and give them random properties. So to do that we're going to create a for loop. So for i is equal to 0, i is less than 60. Again, if you wanted more or less balls on the stage, you just lower this number. And then we say semicolon i++. Okay, so now we're actually going to attach one of these ball movie clips to the stage. And when we use the attach movie method, we want to set it equal to a variable so that we can then use this variable to set all of its properties. So I'm going to say var t for temp is equal to this dot attach movie. You can see the first thing it's asking us for is the ID or the linkage name. And that was ball. Now we have to give it uh, an instance name. So a quick way to do that, I'm going to say ball. And then on the end of that, I'm going to concatenate I to it. So the first time it comes through is going to be ball 0, ball 1, ball 2, ball 3. And now we need to give it the depth. And to do that, we're just going to, again, we're going to give uh, I as the depth. Okay. So now this is attached one ball movie clip onto the stage, and it's temporarily assigned to this variable T. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to set the X and Y coordinates of this ball to a random position. So I'm going to say t dot underscore x is equal to math dot random. 
Again, if you're unfamiliar with this, if you look at the Flash Math, uh, Flash Math 1 tutorial I did, it talks all about using random numbers. And then I'm going to multiply that by the width of the stage. And you can see uh, to get that, you can see the stage is 450 by 400. Okay, so math.random times 450. So that's going to put the this ball at a random coordinate somewhere on our stage, the x coordinate. For the y coordinate, it's going to be a similar thing, and my panel is acting funny here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this line, paste it, and now just change this to y, and then put in the height of your movie. In my case, it's 400. Okay, so this will put that ball movie clip at a random place on the stage. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a property uh, on this movie clip. This property is going to store the destination coordinates of where we want our ball to move to. So here we're attaching it initially to a random place on the stage. Now we need a random destination for this thing to move to. So we're going to say t.dx for destination x is equal to math dot random and again we want to give the width of our movie it's 450 okay but what we want to do is we want the destination uh, coordinates we want it to be a nice round number so that's how we're going to be checking to see if it's arrived at its destination yet so we're going to encapsulate this whole thing is math dot round so it will round off whatever this random number comes to. Okay, so now we have that. Again, it's going to be the same thing for the y coordinates. So I'm going to copy and paste this. This will be destination y, and then give it 400. Okay, so we've created a random x and y coordinate for it to be placed initially. And now we're choosing a random destination here that we want it to move to. Okay, so to add some more randomness into this, we want to make the scale of this ball uh, random as well. So we say t dot underscore x scale is equal to math dot random. And we're going to say times 300. Now this will give us a random number between 0 and 300, but we don't ever want it to be 0. Uh, so we want to add a little bit onto here. As, uh, safety net. So I'm going to add 40 onto here. So the smallest it will be is 40. The largest it would be is 340. Okay. Now this is just setting the x scale, but I want it to always scale proportionally. So I'm going to set the y scale equal to the x scale. And that will make the scaling proportional. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to set the on frame event for this ball. And the on enter frame uh, of this ball movie clip is what's going to be moving it across the stage. So we're going to say t dot on enter frame is equal to mover. Now mover is a function I'm going to be writing in a second. So as it goes through this loop, all 60 of these balls will be uh, we'll have their on enter frame set to mover, and it, that's what will actually be moving the ball across the stage. So now I can close my for loop here, and now I just need to write this mover function. So I'm going to say function mover. Okay. All right, the first thing I want to do here is now I want to move the ball in the direction towards our destination. And we're going to make it move with easing applied to it uh, to make it nice and smooth and to kind of have a more fluid motion. So to do that, this is the, the simple formula for creating easing through ActionScript. We're going to say this dot underscore x. Remember, this is referring to uh, whichever ball uh, is in here. So if we say this, it's referring to the ball movie clip. Then we're going to say plus equals. So it's we're going to be adding a certain amount to the current x coordinate. And what we're going to add to that is first we're going to take the difference between the destination and where we currently are. 
So this dot dx, because remember dx stores the destination coordinate of where this is moving to, and we're going to subtract to it from it the current position of where we are, and that's stored by this dot underscore x. And we're going to put that in parentheses because we want this to be calculated first. Okay, now what we want to do, if we just left it like this, it's basically going to move right to where the destination is immediately. But we want to divide this by a number, and this number we divide by will actually be our speed. So if we divide it by, let's say, 3, that will give us a certain speed. So what's happening is every time we come in here, we're adding some to the current x, and what we add to it is the difference between the destination and where we are right now divided by 3. So basically it's going to start out moving quick and as this this number here gets smaller divided by this it will slowly come to a stop and arrive at the destination. Okay so again uh, this is a great formula to memorize because anytime you want to do animation and action script with easing applied this is what you're going to need to do. So I'm going to copy this because it's going to be the same type of thing for the y. I just change that to this dot underscore y. Again, destination y, this dot underscore y. Okay, so now we have our object or our ball moving towards its destination. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to check to see if it's arrived at its destination. If it has arrived, then we simply choose a new destination x and a new destination y to get it going in that way again. So we're going to use an if statement. We're going to say if we're going to say math dot round and give it this dot underscore x. So we're taking the current position of the ball and we're rounding it just so we can do this comparison. And we're going to check that to see if it's at the same x coordinate as the destination, which is this dot dx. Okay, so if it is, this will come out true and we know that it's arrived at its destination. Now we don't need to also check the y because if the x has gotten there, then the y has gotten there as well. Okay, so if this is true, we just simply need to choose uh, a new destination. And we already have the code for that up here. So we can copy that and then come down and paste it in here. The only thing we're going to have to change is T doesn't mean anything once we're in this on enter frame. We just need to change this to this. Okay, so now we're selecting a new destination for our ball. Then we're going to come in here and do it all over again. When it's arrived, we'll choose a new one and so on and so forth. So I can close this now. Okay, so let's quickly run through all of this code before we actually take a look at it. The first thing that happens when we come to the movie is we're coming into this for loop, and it's going to run through this for loop 60 times. Each time it comes through, we're attaching that ball movie clip from the stage, I mean from the library, onto the stage, and we're assigning that to this temporary variable t just so we can easily set its properties. First thing we do here is we, need, we set a random x and y position for our ball movie clip. Then we choose a random destination x and a destination y coordinate. This is where it's going to be moving to. Then we set a random scale for our ball so that there's uh, all different types sizes of balls in there. We set the y scale equal to the x scale because we want it to scale proportionally. And then we set the on enter frame going for this ball to this function mover. So all 60 balls after we've come through here are all calling this mover function every frame. Then inside of here, what's happening is we're taking the x-coordinate of the ball and we're adding to it the difference or the distance between the destination and where we currently are divided by 3. Now 3 is just, uh, you, if you put 5 in here, it would move slower. If you put 2 in here, it would move quicker. So you can adjust this number. You can think of this number as your speed. But the higher the number, the slower it will move. And again, we're doing the same thing for the for the y uh, position. Now we need to check to see if the ball has arrived at its destination. 
If it has, then let's choose a new destination and then it will come through here and start moving towards that one. And again, check to see if it's arrived. And to check to see if it's arrived, we simply round off the current X position of the ball and see if that's equal to the destination that we've randomly chosen. If it is, then we choose a new destination. Okay, so let's go out and test this movie and see what we have. Okay, so we can see we have 60 balls now on the stage and they all have a random scale and they're all moving to random places on the stage. So once it arrives where it is, it chooses a new destination and then starts moving towards it. So this in itself is, is not particularly useful other than kind of experimental, um, you know, artistic type flash. Uh, and it, this can be great for that. But it's also uh, just a way to add randomness so that every time you come to this movie, it will never look the same. It's always going to be different every time you come to it. And this should be a good starting point for you to do more um, animation using ActionScript, which can be a lot easier to control than doing it on the timeline. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.